Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Five Questions with the Paulists. I am Deacon Mike Hayes, and I am so excited because I met this guy in Indianapolis at the National Eucharistic Congress. He is the new recruiter in the vocations office. Actually, not so new. He's been here a little over a year now. It's Ernie Garrido, and Ernie, welcome to the show. It's so exciting Hello. to have you here. Hello, Deacon Mike. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor and a blessing to be here with you. Thanks. You too. Question one right away, you know, you've been with the Paulus Fathers Vocations Office now for a little more than a year. So what, what's the part of this job that you love the most? Gosh, you know, more than anything to just be back in contact with the Paulus community. Um, you know, I, I consider the Paulus Fathers my spiritual fathers ever since I met them back in my undergrad days at UT Austin. And uh, then uh, uh, in New York at St. Paul the Apostle, um, and just being back in community with them, especially in this role, has been such a blessing. And uh, getting to know the seminarians and the novices, you know, my gosh, they're just an incredible group of young, talented men. And it's been uh, just an honor to, you know, be with them and pray with them and get to know their backgrounds and kind of spend time with them at Hector House. Um, and it's, it's just uh, a humbling experience to be able to see the uh, the formation of a priest from from this point, which, uh, you know, I, I certainly never expected uh, to have this opportunity. So that's just been uh, uh, amazing. Not to mention all the great people, you know, that uh, Father Ed, our vocation director, and I uh, get, get to speak with, like at the conferences. Absolutely. You also have free permission to cry at every ordination from now on. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I think I, you know, uh, my 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 actually my first Paulist ordination was uh, uh, Father Chris and Father Dan's ordination, yeah. and yeah, I mean it was like waterworks galore, especially uh, during their first masses on Pentecost. I mean, talk about the Paulist Father, you know, Holy Spirit in action. Yeah. Right there. I was crying for sure. Uh, let's get the question too. Uh, you know, when you're talking to people about discerning a vocation of the priesthood or religious life, what what's the hardest part of the pitch that you have to make? What part of the life is the hardest thing for you to explain to people? You know that that's a great question, and um, you know we we specifically go uh, uh, in inviting young men, and I say young men because now I'm like 43, gray beard. So anyone, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyone below 30, so 40 is a young man for me. Uh, but we, we go looking for young professionals, recent college grads, uh, maybe some men who already have uh, professions or careers. And so the hardest part is to take that leap of faith that, you know, Jesus talks about when, when he mentions, uh, you know, come follow me. And there's all oh, I got to go bury my father. or I got to go tend to my land. And uh, no, just trust in God, trust in Jesus, trust in your discernment. Um, and so it's just giving them that, I guess, motivation or courage through prayer, of course, um, to to kind of follow that that, that calling, those uh, promptings from the Holy Spirit to kind of uh, open themselves up for discernment and uh, and and pursue religious life and community. Um, you know, luckily, uh, I always invite everyone to go to our, our viapolis.org website and just kind of take a look at all the backgrounds and uh, I guess professional resumes of all of our seminarians um, and, and novices and, and they'll see that they have such a diverse professional background, but they all took that, you know, leap of faith. They all followed uh, the, the Holy Spirit's prompting to kind of leave everything behind and open themselves up to the, the possibility of, of the priesthood. Because when I encounter these young men, that's, that's where we're at, you know, the initial stage of um, giving them the prayers, the encouragement to, to follow that, uh, that uh, discernment to the priesthood with the Paulus. Absolutely. And question three, along the same lines, what, what makes the Paulist fathers unique? Uh, what, how is being a Paulist different than being any other kind of a Catholic priest? You know, and, and this is what excites me the most about uh, this role in uh, with, with Paula's vocations and, and also what kind of gave me the confidence to accept this this role. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I consider the Paulas to be my spiritual fathers. And what always, uh, uh, you know, caught me about them is that they helped me to realize that Jesus is not some, you know, distant, unapproachable God. Uh, you know, the, the Paulas helped me realize that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to approach Jesus with my flaws, with my sins, with my doubts, more questions about the faith, uh, and that Jesus is there with the answers. And, and, and every Paulus that I've ever met 
to this day, because I'm still meeting Palestine I've never met before, they, they, they have that same welcoming, embracing uh, charism that they welcome me as who I am. They welcome everyone as who they are. And hey, you know, let's let's get to explore the Catholic faith. Let's get to explore uh, what what the Paulus charism and community is all about. Um, and I think, you know, the people that I've encountered uh, during my travels this past year that that, that know the Paulus, uh, they, they all share similar accounts of, of that welcoming embrace from the Paulus. Uh, you know, not to mention that everyone likes to. Uh, share their favorite memories uh, of of their their, their time in, at university or at college uh, with with a Paulus parish. Um, I am I'm I'm so delighted and happy when I encounter uh, you know older people from um, like Clemson. Uh, you know the the Paulus have not been in Clemson for quite some time, and they still remember the 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 Paulus that was their their priest, and they always have like a funny anecdote or a good memory. Um, and so that's that's what's unique about the Paulist. And on, on, on my role with vocations, that really helps me uh, to to welcome these young men and their parents, too, and catechists and school teachers. You know, if you recognize, a, you know, someone that could be a potential candidate, uh, put them in contact with us and we will definitely help them in their journey. Perfect. And question four, uh, a little more personal on your end. What, what's your favorite piece of scripture and why? Gosh, you know that I, I I think I have to go with Ecclesiastes three, a classic. Um, I've I've always, you know, I spent some some fair time myself discerning, seeing where where the Holy Spirit was guiding me, and I found that balance in faith is really important to me, and 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 so that's why I like to visit this particular passage of scripture because I think it talks about you know that balance that we have to give ourselves. Uh, you know, uh, time to work, time to pray, time to mourn, time to be happy, time to be in fellowship with others, time to be uh, within ourselves. Um, and I've, I've always found that going back to Ecclesiastes 3 um, brings me to that balance whenever I freak out about a deadline or, you know, uh, something stressful. Not this show, of course. I was looking forward to this show, so I didn't have to go. Um, but I, I do take great uh, uh, um, comfort and strength from, from that passage of scripture. Very nice. And finally, question five, it's a zombie apocalypse. So who are three saints or holy people that you would want fighting on your side against the zombies? Yeah, we, well, I, I have to go with Tim Paul, of course, a patron saint of, of the Paulist. And uh, we, know, we know that Tim Paul survived like what, uh, shipwrecks and stonings and, you know, all kinds of uh, I guess apocalyptic like challenges and he overcame them. Uh, plus, uh, I guess being a tent maker by trade would come in handy in case everything <laughs> falls apart and we need some kind of shelter. Uh, so I would say St. Paul, um, you know, one of my uh, uh, patron saints, I guess, would be St. Sebastian, the, the, you know, patron saints of athletes. Uh, he, again, he also survived, uh, you know, I, 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 I think two uh, uh, martyrdoms. Um, and, uh, just his, his background as a Roman soldier and his discipline and his, you know, strength and athleticism, I think that would come in handy when trying to, uh, outrun zombies and defend ourselves. <laughs> and the third one, I, I guess it's related to St. Paul. And I would say St. John the Baptist, um, because again, he, you know, he survived, he, uh, uh, from locusts because if that's all there is to eat, you know, I guess that's what. We'll get to eat locust and wild honey. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I always look at, at St. John the Baptist, too, because uh, whatever, I guess, challenges or obstacles come my way. It's about preparing the way for Jesus, right? Preparing the path for Jesus. And so I always straight, take uh, great strength from uh, him reminding that, you know, we whatever life throws our way, whether it be zombies or, uh, you know, what have you, uh, just prepare the way for Jesus. Amen. I don't think anybody's chosen St. John the Baptist before, so that's very cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. I even have socks at St. John the Baptist. I, yeah. I am I am addicted to a sock religious. And, you know, Father Ed will tell you that at every conference we go to, if they have a stand, I'm rating it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ernie, it's been so much fun having you by. I'm so glad that we got together in Indianapolis. And uh, I'm glad yeah. to be today. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, for for everyone watching, uh, I, I mean, you know, please, if, if if you're a catechist, if you are a youth group leader, a school teacher, a parent, and and of course, any young men interested in learning more about discerning religious life with the polis, uh, you know, visit us, beapolis.org. There's a link there. Get in contact with our vocation director, with myself. We're always happy to talk with you. Send you materials. Uh, you know, for your upcoming youth group meeting, or if you're a, a, a catechist school teacher, we got all kinds of cool uh, polis materials to kind of what Father Ed calls planting the the the, the uh, faith seed, the seed of faith. You know, hopefully encourage a uh, uh, discernment to uh, polis priesthood. That would be great. This has been five questions to the polists. If you want to be a polist, he's the guy to call. Ernie Garrido, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Deacon Mike. We'll see you all again next time.